All right, everyone, welcome to the ANSYS tutorial for Lab 2. This is for the BYU ME372 class. And as we can see, Lab 2 is, once again, just another truss. Um, so we're going to be modeling almost the same thing as Lab 1, except this time we notice we have, obviously, a few more members. And if you read the lab report, it says that horizontal members have a diameter of 1 inch, and vertically angled members have a diameter of 2 inches. So we'll have two different cross sections here, and that's a simple change. Um, but other than that, it'll be pretty much the same steps we'll be following in ANSYS as Lab 1. All right, so it, as you can see here, it's 1020 steel, um, but it, we have some mixed units here, which you might often find in industry. Um, one group will give you units in US, and another, another company might give you units in metric. So some practice here. Um, we the lengths are in one meter. So all lengths of these truss members are one meter wide, or sorry, one meter long. But then horizontal members have a diameter of one inch, and vertically angled members have a diameter of two inches. So these ones here are two inches. So you have to do the math to compute that. Um, I'm going to choose to do this lab in metric units, um, in SI units. So I'm going to convert those inches into uh, meters and do my cross-sectional areas in uh, meters. So if we hop into ANSYS, this is just a quick review of those steps. Um, the first thing we'll do is a preprocessor, which is where we define all of our geometry, if you remember. So element type is the same. We'll jump into the L type menu, add edit delete. We're going to add one, and we're going to use the same as before. We'll have a link element, link 180. So we'll click both of those, then we'll hit OK. Then we'll hit close here. And close up that menu, and the next thing down is real constants, which if you remember, um, was specifying the cross-sectional area of each of each member of the truss and how much it weighs, or sorry, the weight per length. Because if um, you remember the truss, all the members are either tension or compression, so it doesn't care about bending. So all it needs to know is a cross-sectional area, so it can compute F over A. So I'm going to make one up here um, for the skinnier members, which are the horizontally angled members. I'll give it 0.005. And then it's a mass per length, um, so I'm just going to say that it's 6 kilograms per meter. Remember, you have to do that, that math yourself. Um, so the, yeah, actually I explained that in lab one, so if you'd like a review on the, on the, how to compute the mass, how to compute the mass per length, then go back to lab one and I'll explain that there. So we'll hit OK, and then we'll hit close here. And then the next menu is our material properties menu. Um, so we'll go into material models, and it's a structural model, linear equations, and it's an elastic material, and it's also isotropic. So again, um, verify your numbers yourself. I'm just going to use a generic 30 megapascals for steel and a 0.29 of Poisson's ratio. So hit OK, and then you can close this out. And then the next menu down is sections, which we won't use until we do 3D elements or 3D geometry. And under, so under modeling, this is where we create all of our key points and our lines, basically our geometry. So modeling, create key points in active CS. And then looks like I already have them written up from before. But basically, we're going to have to create these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven key points. Uh, so I'll start with this one over here on the left, far left in the bottom at zero, zero. That looks like my window got hidden, so I'll click this raise hidden button. So I'll start at zero, zero, zero. I'll hit apply, so it pulls up this window again, and I can just keep entering more key points. And the other ones were just in the X direction, they're all one meter apart. So I'll do one, two, and three. And then you can see we have those bottom ones, key points right here, one, two, three, and four. So we have to create the top ones, do some trigonometry for that. Um, so if you think about the triangle, um, it's pretty much just that the vertical length from the top to the bottom is just sine of 60. Um, sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And again, the opposite is the height, which we want. So it's x over hypotenuse, which we know is a length of one, because that... Uh, that uh, truss member has a length of 1 as specified in the lab report. So solve for x is just sine 60, which is 0.866. But that is obviously our height, so x, y, z, we'll put it over here in the y section. And then each uh, top point up here is half a meter 
in the x direction, and then 0.866 in y. So again, raise it in. So half a meter in x, 0.866 in y, hit apply. Perfect. It looks like it's just in the right spot up there. So I'm just going to keep going, create two more of those. Uh, one and a half and two and a half. Now, I hit apply, so it pulled up the window again. So if I hit OK, it'll create another key point on top of key point seven. Because anytime you hit apply, it applies the changes and brings up the window again. So if I hit OK, it'll apply the changes and close the window. So I'll have two key points there. So I'm just going to hit cancel. OK, so we've got our key points. Now we're going to create our lines. Lines again and a straight line. And with this menu, you can just start clicking everywhere. And I'll do a click, 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 click. Just connect all the dots. Order doesn't really matter at all. Um, and Ansys is pretty forgiving on whether or not you're very close to the key point you're clicking. So I hit OK. And I have my geometry here, which is great. So the next thing down, um, again, usually I'll just look through all the blue items. And I'll say, do I need that? Do I need that? Do I need that? I don't know. So the next thing down is meshing. And if you remember, meshing is how ANSYS is where we specify what ANSYS turns all of our geometry into. So right now, all it knows is it has some lines here. It doesn't know what the lines are supposed to represent. So meshing is where we do that. Meshing is also where we divide up um, our geometry into nodes. If you remember from finite element analysis, we're supposed to create small finite elements and then um, have ANSYS analyze those. So that's where we also do that, is in meshing. So first is mesh attributes. Um, we have to, this is where we tell ANSYS what each line is supposed to represent, like which, what material and things like that. So if you remember, we have two different um, cross sections. So we're going to have two different attributes here for these lines. So I'm going to pick lines, and I'm going to pick first the horizontal members because they're a certain cross section. So if I pick those and hit OK. It'll have a material number, a real constant set number, and an element type. So if you remember, um, it's all 1020 steel, so there's only one material. And then, but we made two real constant sets. Oh, I didn't. All right. Well, let me show you how to do that. Um, under real constants, we're going to add, edit, and delete. So I only have one here. And if you remember earlier, I made it, I, it looks like I made it, yeah, 0 0.05 meters squared for the area and six kilograms per meter so that's the skinnier one so i'm going to open up this menu i'm going to hit add and i'll choose it's still the same link element so i hit okay and this time it says real constant set number two so i'll um you have to do the math your own for the cross-sectional area for the thick members but i'm just going to say it's uh 9.09 .09 meters squared and I'll give it a mass per length of 9 kilograms per meter. So you'll, again, you'll have to do your own math for that. I'm just making up some numbers here. But I hit OK, and then I have two real constant sets defined. So I can close this out. And then I'll go back down to where I was in meshing. And mesh attributes, and I'll pick, again, the horizontal lines. And when I hit OK, now I have two different real constants to choose from. And I'm going to choose one because the horizontal ones are the skinnier members. And then I'll hit OK. And then again, I'm going to pick lines and pick all the vertical ones this time. So now when I hit OK, I can choose real constant set 2, and all the vertical lines will be the thicker cross section. OK. That's it for mesh attributes. And then size controls is where you decide how small all of your little elements are going to be in your finite element analysis. Um, so we'll talk more of that later when we do 3D elements, but if you go into manual size, so meshing size controls manual size, we can look at the, uh, we'll click lines because we're meshing these lines that we've drawn, and where they're all going to be the same um, mesh. You can choose different meshes for different lines, but right now they're all going to be the same because they're all one meter long. But anyway, um, the odd thing about link elements is that we're going to use and div, number of element divisions. If you remember, it's just one from out of one. So we'll hit OK there. And we see that all of our links are divided up into only one division here, which is what uh, which is what ANSYS wants for link elements. And so now we're just going to mesh. We're going to actually tell it to turn those things into the objects and to the material we've defined. So we'll mesh these lines, and we'll just hit pick all. 
And now let's turn these all into different beams. So if you want to see them, you go into uh, Plot Controls, Style, Size and Shape. And then we'll display element, this little button right here. Display element on. We'll hit OK. So now we can see, as this has given a, um, just a gen generic shape with a certain cross-section that we defined earlier. Um, but <clears throat> again, my numbers are different, so mine are going to look a lot thicker than yours might. So that's all we need for meshing. And then now uh, we'll look down. We, re we remember loads, so we're going to have to... Uh, Go into loads and define and apply and structural. So loads, define, apply, structural, and displacement. Remember, is where we lock down um, <clears throat> the different points from our model. So if we look back at the lab, we'll see that this is a pin joint and the one on the right is a roller joint. So remember, pin joints can are basically locked down everywhere except they can they can rotate, and then roller joints can don't move vertically, but they can slide in, in X. So that's how we'll know what um, directions to tell it to lock our displacement in. So if we choose displacement on key points, this should look a little familiar to you. We'll go to the very left one and we'll click it here, uh, that, that key point, because that's where the pin joint was. We'll hit OK. And then we want all degrees of freedom because we don't want it to move in X, Y, or Z. And we'll hit OK. And then we'll do it again on key points and pick the one on the right, the far right key point. And we'll hit OK. And then you'll notice the default is because we already clicked all degrees of freedom, it's still selected. So we want to unselect all degrees of freedom and then hit lock in, in Y and Z. And we want to leave it free to, to translate in X because that's what a roller joint does. Um, so remember, uncheck all degrees of freedom and then Y and Z, or else it will still be constrained in all and Y and Z. So we'll hit OK there, and we have our two um, key points properly constrained. So we're going to close displacement, and the next thing to do is to apply the force that's listed in the lab write out. So we have two and a half kilonewtons pulling downward on this key point right here. So we're going to do a force on a key point. And we're going to apply it right here. Hit OK. And then we want it to be in Y, which is correct. And look, it's already down there because I practiced this earlier. So we want it to be in Y, and it's negative because we want it downward. And 2,500, if you remember, because ANSYS does not know kilonewtons. It knows newtons, meters, and that sort of thing. Very um, basic single unit, um, order of magnitude of one, I guess, units. So if you have a megapascal, you got to type in six zeros. If you have a kilonewton, you got to type in, you know, 2,500, not just 2.5. So we'll hit OK. And there's our force right there going down. And you remember the last thing to do <clears throat> is inertia or gravity. So forgive the printer that's printed in the background. Um, inertia, gravity, global. And now, um, if you remember from last time, gravity is a little funny because... If you're doing um, metric units, we've done everything in kilograms, which is not a force, it's a mass. So if we want to represent gravity, we need to put in 9.8. So it multiplies all those kilograms by 9.8 meters per second squared. And it is just positive 9.8, not negative. Um, just trust that that works. <laughs> and then, but if we were doing US units, we would just put in a one because the pounds that we specified for our weight and everything and our density is a force. Um, so we don't have to multiply it by gravity because it already has that. Pounds already has gravity included in it, so we just put in a 1. But anyway, for uh, metric, we're just going to put in 9.8 because we have to multiply those kilograms by gravity. So we'll hit OK. And the arrow points up. I don't know why, but that is correct. So just trust that. <laughs> and then if you think about it, we have everything here that we want to model. We have everything from reality that we want to include in our model. Um, we have geometry. We have... Uh, material constants um, or material models, we've given it uh, weight per length, that kind of thing. We have our displacement locked down on the left and right. We have gravity and we have an applied force. So that's what we're modeling and that's what we're going to make ANSYS solve. So next in our solution uh, menu, the very, you know, the initial black menus, we have solution and then solve and current uh, LS. So we'll hit OK. It's going to, might produce a warning sometimes in future labs, but warnings are often all right so we'll just hit okay on the warnings but this one shouldn't produce any 
Solution is done. Perfect. We'll hit close there. We'll close out this command window. And now in post processing, again, that's where we um, make ANSYS print out the results of the solutions of the solution. Um, we want to plot this because in the lab printout right here, it says turn in a plot of the stresses in each element and a plot of the deformed shape due to the weight of the truss alone. So we'll do that next, but we want to plot a plot of the stresses in each element. <clears throat> so we'll go into, so general post-processing, then we'll go to plot results. And if you remember from lab one, it's, these won't be open, sorry. Plot result, contour plot, and nodal solution. And we want a stress. So we open up the stress menu. And we go down to von Mises stress, which again, you'll learn about later in the class, but it's basically the best way for calculating overall uh, st stresses. So we'll hit OK. And there's our pretty little plot with all the colors. And we see that the greatest stress is up in this stress member right here, and it's 449 um, megapascal or sorry kilopascals. So don't trust those numbers. Yours will be a lot different because you've done uh, you'll have accurate geometry, whereas I just made up some numbers. Uh, but this is what we we'll want to print out. So remember, to print out we have to go to plot controls, and hard copy, and to file because we want to save it and put it in our lab report before we print it. So click to file, and then remember you probably, you can do a JPEG if you want something really uh, better looking with more resolution, hit a, a TIFF file, um, but we'll just do JPEG. And then rem remember that ver reverse video makes this black white uh, black background white so that you can print it and write in your units here. Because if you print out black, one, you waste an ink, and two, you can't write anything in afterwards or write on the, the report or the printout. So we hit OK. And remember that ANSYS just saves to the root of your J drive. So the very first folder in your J drive, and you click it here. I usually just open up my J drive and sort by date modified. And the soonest, uh, the most recent one is that file that I just saved. So there it is. Awesome. So if you notice the JPEG is pretty poorly compressed. So I'm going to go over a better way to print out these pictures in a future lab. <coughs> when you're going to need more detail, which you will later. So for now, that's okay. Um, but yours will also be better because my screen resolution is huge, as you can tell, for this this uh, demo. But anyway, that's what we want. And we'll notice back in the lab report that it says, turn in a plot of the deformed shape due to the weight of the truss alone. So we want weight, and we don't want our applied force from earlier. So what we're going to do is go into our session editor down at the very bottom <clears throat> of this menu in black, the session editor. That pulls up all the code that we've used to make this lab. So sometimes it's old and the session editor, editor hasn't updated. So what I suggest you do is in the chance, in the uh, situation where the, okay, sorry, suggest the session editor has been um, sitting behind your ANSYS window and you've been making edits in the, in the user interface, um, which is on the left here. The session editor won't update with those new changes that you've made unless you close out the one that's hidden behind the window and then open it up fresh again. Then it'll have all the new code that you've done. Um, so anyway, we want it to report the weight of the truss alone without the applied force. So what we're going to do here is just find this applied force near the bottom. You'll see negative 2500 and we'll just delete that line. So we'll delete that. And when you want to rerun all this code, you just highlight it all, or the sections that you want to run, and then copy it, and put it up into the command prompt, this big white line here. Just paste that entire thing in there and hit enter. And it'll say, clear destroys the effects of all previous input, which is what you want to do. You want to clear out the old code and put in the new, so you hit yes, and then it reruns everything you did. So now it's doing the solution again. Solution is done, we'll hit close, close out that. And now you notice the stretches are a lot lower, only 72 kilopascals. Um, so this is the this is the effects of the truss just due to its own weight. Um, so again, this printout is exaggerated. You could not see the def you would not see the deflections in real life. Um, so it exaggerates that so you can actually see the changes. Um, but if we go again into post-processing, 
and into this time we want to list some results and you'll see why soon here so we go into list results and still we go well, sorry we'll go down to reaction solution this time because we want to see all the um, reaction forces so we'll keep it all, all items and okay and answers here prints out <laughs> The reactions at those two places where we've at those two nodes or key points that we locked it down so node one here is on the left node five is on the right so you'll see that they both have 411 pounds in the y direction so this total value right here this total values area is where it lists the total forces in x y and z um, so you'll notice that the total forces in y are 823 and remember this is only due to gravity alone so that is the weight of your truss, is 823 pounds, or sorry, newtons, because I'm doing this in metric. So that's what you need to report um, when it says, apply the deformed shape due to the weight of the truss alone. Be sure to clearly report via screenshot of the answers printout, the total weight of the truss. So this is the answers printout we're talking about. So you'll do a screenshot of that or whatever, and <clears throat> report that value right there, that it's 823 newtons. And that is all we need for this lab. So um, thanks for watching, and I hope you got everything figured out. Um, if you have any questions, you can always meet with me again. Um, we can go over this lab one more time, but I think uh, this video should be everything you need to finish lab two. So thanks much.